thank you, Shelley. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize to uh, our group that was in San Diego a week and a half ago. You may hear some of the same stories and uh, uh, give a fella a couple of weeks to regenerate before you can put out new information. Uh, you know, there are, there are really several kinds of people involved in architecture today. And uh, there are those that are uh, concerned and participate in architecture, and uh, there are those that are really that are really committed. And there's a difference. If you go to a chicken and you tell her that you're really hungry, and she shows concern, and she lays you an egg, that's participation. However, if you go to a pig and you tell him of your situation and he gives you a pound of bacon, that's commitment. <laughs> and I think, uh, uh, for all my San Diego friends, thank you, uh, but uh, I, I think that that's what I'd really like to talk about tonight is uh, design, process, and product, participation versus commitment. A student recently told me that uh, the most important thing is to pull yourself up by your own hair, turn yourself inside out, and see the whole world with fresh eyes. An incredibly lucid statement because in our era of accelerating change, seeing clearly and responding to the forces of changing values becomes our challenge as planners and architects. Being somewhat limited in the hair department, however, I'd, I'd like to perform for you a kind of a professional strip, if you will, uh, an expose of some of the things that we're doing and some of our attitudes. Seeing with fresh eyes means striving for new insights through experimentation and through analysis of our own experiences. Many of us look but do not see. Open your eyes and let the whole world fall in. It means intellectual, emotional, and physical curiosity that leads to innovation. To learn is to change. Education is a process that changes the learner. Learning involves interaction between the learner and his environment. And its effectiveness relates to the frequency, the variety, the intensity of the interaction. Education at its best is ecstatic. I'm quite impressed with what I see here tonight. I, I hope there are some ecstatic people uh, in this kind of environment. The purpose of a de democratic society is to make great persons. A democratic way of doing anything is a way that best keeps and develops the intrinsic powers of men. That interaction between man and his environment is our concern, and it takes a great commitment and energy to see through the labyrinth with clarity. Architecture today must be responsive to the basic psychological needs of people, which are the relationships of humans to humans, of humans to objects, a continuity of a pattern of events, relative comfort, security, opportunity for privacy, opportunity to change that state of privacy, opportunity to communicate, and opportunity to create. The changing environment demands greater team dynamics and team interaction as new design processes emerge and change. No man stands alone. The team concept is essential. The problems are much too complex. One of our projects, a typical project, a community college, takes 14 man years to develop in a single year time span. The new responsiveness to change demands that the design team must have the ability to free the intuition plus basic intellectual functioning, the ability to be accurate, the ability to be intellectually honest, the sensitivity to respond to emotions, the ability to be open-minded, the ability to keep suspended judgment while searching for a design direction, the ability to search for cause and effect relations, the ability to criticize principally oneself, the ability to think and act in both quantitative and qualitative terms, 
the ability to project with empathy one's own consciousness into another being, the ability to perceive, the ability to be an activist, to cause change, even accelerate change, to be in progress and motion. Man shows his nobility by action. In essence, the team should be intellectually and emotionally energetic. Energy is not only the force that keeps all in continuous motion, it is also the fundamental substance of which the universe is made. Our universe is composed of minute, moving, bobbing particles of energy called electrons. Everything is said to move and pulsate. There must be a concern for the program. And at CRS we hold programming in the highest esteem as it gives the genetic tract to the whole organism. We must seek a clear understanding of the nature of the problem to be solved. This goes beyond quantitative terms and includes a definition of human institutions. He must seek out the essence, the uniqueness, the things that really count and clearly state the problem. He must seek out the nature of the way the parts go together and objectively establish affinities and hierarchies of activities. The program includes time and budget. You must seek a programmatic response in your design efforts. There must be a concern for the economy of means as well as financial economy and we must seek an understanding of communication. Architecture is the medium by which you communicate your attitudes. It is the extension of human activity. Your attitudes expressed can communicate the need to break social and intellectual barriers. One must comprehend communication limits. For speech, it's 200 to, 50, 200 to 500 bits of information per minute. For reading, it's 500 to 2,000 bits of information per minute, per minute, particularly those that have taken the Evelyn Wood Reading Dynamics course, uh, 10,000 for some. And the brain receives more than 1 billion signals per second, many more than reach our consciousness. A concern for an understanding of systems of communication as we approach the 21st century is imperative to the design team. Jack Terrell, a friend of mine and a leading educator, recently said that machines communicate content or facts infinitely better than professors, and that the role of education is individual discovery or learning the process of learning. The cathedral, as a dispenser of information with its symbols, is manifest today as the TV tube. We already see entire buildings becoming TV sets and computers as our way of life approaches the pure movement of information in our electronic world. There must be a concern for the concept of indeterminacy, that events are not and cannot be determined in a peremptory manner, but that there is the possibility or the tendency for an event to occur. This is part of our new reality. Therefore, we must think in terms of open-ended systems, internal flexibility, versatility, and expansibility. We are moving towards the incarnation of the new possibilities of immaterialism, which is value not in the object, but in how people think about it, how they get it to you, and what you can do with it. Indeterminacy produces an attitude of change, and according to the Gestalt psychologist, generates a feeling of identity and security because of our ability to recognize the pattern of related cycles, the pattern of interdependence, and the identity in relativity. There must be a concern for time as the pressing social problems approaching the 21st century demand that we produce, demand that we solve problems with fast track quality. There must be a concern for fixed elements and flexible elements that these items be determined. Part of the program analysis is to determine what elements are of a longer cyclic existence than others. This usually establishes circulation and mechanical services as more fixed elements while the remaining functions gradually become loft spaces for maximum flexibility. There must be concern for the realities of the situation. This includes program, site, money, time, and quality. And it leads to a particular solution for a partic at a particular time for a particular place. The realities will make each problem unique. There must be a love of ideas. 
the sheer ecstasy of expanding the mind with exchange of information and insights. Also, once conceived, ideas are no longer personal, Shelley, but they belong to the human community at large, as we were just talking about. We must explore the concept of intermix. Intermixing gives the options for vitality. The idea of interaction is really the important thing. The confluence of people, of information, and goods. Intermix offers an opportunity to come in contact with different levels of action simultaneously. People can see the total process and better understand the relatedness of their particular situation. Intermix also exposes all facets of a place. It sets up an interplay of planes and dramatic conflicts of patterns, lights, textures that drives home the message by involvement, instant sensory awareness of the whole. Cities, schools, schools of architecture, business, and families that expedite the greater amount of interaction prosper. Technology is the, mean, is the means by which we go from the tangible to the, from the intangible to the tangible. It not only includes building systems and components, but also the technology of approach to a problem, the know-how to get things done, a technical understanding of the entire process. Form becomes the indivisible and complete expression that arises when systems are employed to reach an intended result. If existing technology does not work, then you push for new technologies as we achieve greater understanding of the human drama at a given time and for a given place. We must be concerned with the mobility and kinetic experience. Movement, interchange, we circulate to communicate. First, we must define the problem, that is the human activities. Then we seek an expression of these activities through a synthesis of spatial relationships Expressions of our attitudes, the resolution of forces, the creation of a spatial energy. Architecture is spatial experience gained by the movement taken by the individual through the man-made environment. Spatial energy is released and we react to it. In other words, spatial sequence becomes a key for the design team. Space is the, realization, is the relation between the position of bodies. In architecture, it becomes spatial sequence because we move. We are bombarded with changing visual stimuli. Therefore, we place great emphasis upon the circulation system of each project as it becomes the linking agent for events, the comprehensible element for orientation, and the social mixing opportunities offered by the street. Circulation also becomes the separator of activities emphasizing their purpose by being a transition zone. Circulation therefore becomes the syntax or connected system of order. The movement of people, ideas, and goods is the mainspring of urban building. The urban man must have social, cultural, educational, political, and physical mobility if he is to realize his potential. Could we have the lights please? see let me right, let me get my commercial in now all right uh, but the commercial is that uh, we're really organized like medical practice and that we are not afraid to specialize and we believe in specialization we think that it takes all kind of architects uh, to participate in the design team and they participate from a broad base of general experience I think the thing I'd like to emphasize tonight is there are many options in architecture. We really try in our firm to strengthen the strengths. And that may be converse to what a lot of people try to do to fulfill your weakness. I think by strengthening your strengths, you can move forward, you can make a 
better thrust. It's almost like a wedge. A, a philosopher friend of mine said, we really are wedges. That if we have a broad base, some of our bases are broader than others, of course, but if we have a broad base, then we can focus in, and that by focusing, we can really create the greater power release and the greater impact on our society. Uh, CRS, we're about 322 people now, and and we have offices in LA. We've been here for over four years now in the Bradbury building. We have an office in Houston. We have one in New York and one in Beirut. Uh, we're committed to the team process. We feel that no one man can do it by himself. It's absolutely impossible. No client's gonna wait 14 years for you to do it. So you better get a team and you better get on a team and you better learn how to work with one because Communication between the team, I think, is part of the new reality of today. Uh, we believe it takes both the generalist and the specialist uh, to work together. Yes, the client's part of the team. You don't bitch about your client, you work with him. He's a member of your group, and you get him in the action. He's right in the hub of things. And you fuse together to do the project. The best, uh, the most successful projects that we've had is where we've had a very strong client uh, from the outset. We believe that the architect then really acts as the catalyst. He's the catalyst for ideas, he's the organizing element for all the governing board, the building committee, faculty, students, etc. to fuse together, to pull together and focus on the project. When an architect comes into the room we find that people will talk to each other, people in various institutions that won't even communicate. We try to fo focus on the issue of equilibrizing certain forces. Form, uh, which of course we think deals with the environment, the site, and the quality intention. Uh, function, that has to do with aims, method, and people. Uh, economy, economy of means as well. Uh, time, boy are we concerned with time. Uh, and we try to equilibrize uh, those forces in relation to a very simple matrix. It's a matrix for organizing a process. It's very loose. It's, it's, it's establishing goals, uh, getting together the facts, uh, testing concepts, determining needs. Um, Steve Albert, one of my associates, is here tonight and he's going to keep me honest. And so what we really try to do in the programming process is separate wants from needs and then state the problem. It's like getting the cards on the table before you play the game. And when you program by design, it becomes a very emotional thing. In other words, if you do a design and then you try to get all the stuff in or work it out, it's like tearing your guts out. So what we try to do is get all the cards on the table where you can be objective about it and you can do the kind of analysis that one really needs to do uh, and then solve the problem. And it makes it good fun. So we look at that, that very simple process of five steps in relation to the four forces. And naturally, uh, any design team is concerned about programming as the prelude of good design. We call programming problem solving and we move then into problems, uh, problem seeking, excuse me. And then we move into problem solving as the more traditional design approach. So we funnel these forces together toward a design solution. Yes, we set priorities. Uh, you better believe you better set them because there's gonna be some fallout and you can't, you can't get all your wants in. So you're gonna have to establish your priority needs. And we talk about flexibility and we ask the embarrassing question, what do you mean? Do you mean exterior change, interior change, or multifunction? And we're very interested with how people interact and how they interrelate in terms of individual, large or small. And we test concepts of aspects of centralization versus decentralization. These are not just physical concepts, but organizational concepts as well. Uh, and what elements can be integrated or what should be compartmented uh, to help equilibrize uh, the forces. We believe it takes a triad of design, technology, and management as a thrust in solving problems. And yes, in your priorities, you have to focus on major ideas and then move toward, toward the detail aspect. 
we love the computer. We have uh, a computer, and uh, one day they'll uh, they'll make one that has a motion. But until then, uh, we use it for uh, helping us with uh, energy conservation issues, the kind of orientation and the several steps that you can follow in the design process. Uh, we use it for testing affinities and hierarchies. Uh, we use it for cost, as anybody does, and engineering, and, uh, and business administration, and uh, uh, writing checks, and things like that. But uh, the computer is a tool. And uh, we see this expanding uh, more and more in the design field. We do not yet have a terminal in our LA office, but we will one day. And uh, I can hardly wait to get a light pen uh, instead of a flow pen. I think when we get to that point, uh, it'll really be exciting and we can really move, uh, move quickly. Uh, you've heard a lot about fast track process, well it's really the crunch process. And so we, we have pioneered uh, systems of design and build uh, while you're still designing. And this is not really so new. H.H. Uh, uh, Richardson was doing this uh, back in the 19th century. They'd build a shell and H.H. would go out and, and he'd say, now here's the way I want the fireplace to do and here's the way I want the, uh, uh, the terracotta to work and uh, he'd put his stonework in. But we think it's new and, and it is saving time and it is saving effort by overlapping uh, the various functions. We're very turned on by systems. Uh, right now we're able to deliver a building with about 85 percent systems that is pre-engineered or manufactured in a plant off the site uh, that other 15 percent we're working on. But it, it does save cost and it assures uh, time savings as well as design quality. And uh, I'm sure most of you tonight are very much interested in the systems approach and systems technology. And uh, it really is the kind of thing that one has to, I think, move toward. Uh, we've, we've employed uh, ongoing systems like the French system on the left, uh, multi-story uh, precast uh, systems. Uh, I call this the, like the egg layer system, but uh, we've built hospitals where you, put the, you completely furnish the rooms and put them in place uh, with the uh, egg system. Um, here the same structural system, but two different kinds of physical expression of the facades uh, that result from the SCSD system, one in Phoenix on the left and a small school in Chicago uh, on the right uh, expressing the ability to grow. Uh, I think what we're moving toward, of course, is the lighter weight the material, the less energy that's consumed in producing that material, and we have to show that concern. Uh, if, if, man, if we could do it really light, we'd be getting there. Uh, I know we're quite interested in the Unistrut system and, and in the kind of speed of construction and the quality of the environment that can come from this. Uh, in terms of technology or know-how or process, uh, we have a system that we call the squatters. And if you know anything about CRS, you may have heard of those are the guys that go and squat. Well, this grew out of a term in Oklahoma when Bill Caudell was trying to get a solution to a problem. He couldn't get an answer out of a school board. And so in Oklahoma, this was before most of your time, uh, they had a squatters group that uh, would just squat on the land. And so the term to squat and get decisions kind of emerged from that. But the idea is really to go where the problem is. It's an inclusive approach rather than an exclusive approach to architectural practice. It's going out of your office, uh, getting off of your tail, going to the conference room or the place where the people are, where the users are, and interacting. And in our matrix of, of, of ordering information, we have little cards that we call snow cards uh, because each one documents a single kind of idea and then you throw it away because if it, if it doesn't last over five minutes and it's easy to throw away and it's not a precious drawing. The other thing that we're very interested in is gaming. And that is actually changing roles with the people, the users, uh, the clients, the engineers, etc., cetera, uh, on the team. And in the slide on the left, uh, we're trying to test flow patterns through the gaming process. And this really leads to the establishment of affinities, to zoning, 
and role changing. Uh, the students on the left are really architects and uh, they're giving ideas and if the architect is just smart enough to listen, if he'll keep his mouth shut long enough uh, and open his eyes, uh, ideas will flow. And uh, these kids know as much about education or more than we as architects ever could at this point in time. They have really fresh, fresh ideas. Uh, this woman on the right at Stanford knows more about the medical suite that she's concerned with than I ever could know. So we listen. Uh, and then when you get the client to start playing the game, when, he, when the surgeon picks up his piece and starts to move it in the right place and says, here's where it ought to be because, then you're learning. And each new project is a total learning experience. To me, it's really like a new thesis each time. You go through because they're unique people at a unique time for a unique problem, and it's never ending. It's always changing and tremendously exciting. From the gaming process then comes an order. Uh, the, well, one game we like to play is there are no constraints. Here's, here's the activities. How could we order them without the constraint of a building? And God, buildings get in the way. So we start from within the department and find the ideal. And then we, so, so we say, ah, departmental ideals, like in a radiology suite for a hospital, and then we apply this to a gaming model that relates to the whole site, so that each department can grow independently, uh, so you're concerned with the open-ended system, uh, circulation becomes the ordering element, and it really establishes the genetic track for the design process and the gaming model builds up and people contribute ideas and things flow and it just gets more and more exciting as you get into it. Yes, as architects we're concerned about cost and why systems? Look at the automotive industry which is more systematic and, and process oriented than the construction industry. We better learn some things uh, there. In fact, uh, with us running out of energy, the automobile industry uh, may be doing buildings now, and um, we need to look toward that. Well, we also think that it needs, you need tough management. And if you have management skills, don't resist these. In other words, strengthen your strengths. And we find people that are excellent managers and that they can work with people and interact with people and influence the direction and schedule and keep things moving on pace. And with management, you move from need to solution and through implementation to result. And we think it takes good management to do this. Some designers have excellent management talents. Uh, some people try to diffuse their talents. Uh, and we're very much interested in the feedback, uh, feedback process as well as the uh, feedback process uh, of design. Could you put the other, other trays on, please? I think we're almost at the end. Well, how did you do that? That's fantastic. How did you do that? How did you go into the... Uh... Oh, they're on the same ones. All right, thank you. No wonder you didn't move them. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, process what okay what kind of products come out of this uh, out of this process which is again uh, fairly loose knit it's always changing with new people working on the design team uh, let's let me share again a, a professional undressing if you will of some of the things that we're doing down in the Bradbury building uh, each day uh, an educational park uh, over in, uh, in Alabama. Very much concerned about the individual as the modular unit. Break the lockstep uh, of the educational process. Uh, focus 40% uh, in individual instruction, 40% in small group. Uh, we got to talking about is the facility the street or is the street the facility? And we said the facility is the street. So that each individual and his own pace could pursue his level of interest. In the slide on the left, it's an educational park that has a street going a half mile long. It starts with the Head Start program and goes through continuing education. And as an individual, if you're a particularly precocious second grader, uh, you may be taking high school math. Uh, if you're a slightly retarded junior in high school, you may be taking a junior high history. 
uh, as an education center of the library that really becomes the focal point. Uh, every house in the town is white, and so we're looking at a white kind of architecture. Uh, we call them cahonkers, but they suck in the fresh air into the mechanical system. Uh, the windows are focused really around, uh, around courtyards. Excuse me, I got a little bit out of, out of sequence here. Around courtyards uh, and exhausting air through that kind of expression. Very low cost project. Uh, the people love it in their community and it's beginning to grow and fulfill a need. Now, for, in New Orleans, for Tulane Medical Center, uh, we went through a gaming process with some 200 people. Oh, one student in the Aniston Project, I asked him, how did he enjoy the school? And he said, you know, I really feel like I'm at Camelot. And I thought that was a pretty nice expression. Now in New Orleans, in working with a tough urban design problem on eight blocks in downtown New Orleans, we really interacted with 250 people to establish the priorities, the ordering element uh, for the medical center. He called for a new basic science center, a new hospital, a psychiatric center, a physician's office building, and we began to order this uh, about circulation, about the central spine, about the concept of orientation. We're very concerned as people go into medical facilities, they can't find their way around. So we try to focus on orientation as a prime issue. And in the Tulane uh, master plan, we bridge streets, uh, we try to tie things together in an urban fabric. The hospital on the right, the psychiatric center that steps back, the ordering elements, one of simplicity of, and comprehensibility. The first phase of the basic science center on the left, which is a mirror glass uh, facade with, uh, with a, a rounded uh, fire exit, of course, and a core space that houses all of the high lab exhaust systems and then the loft space that actually is served by that uh, big loft tower. That connects with an existing uh, building uh, which is the Tulane Medical School on the right and forms a Galleria concept and inter with interlacing bridges to various critical uh, levels. Uh, the ground floor uh, begins to wel welcome people into it and houses the large public and uh, great use areas. We're very much concerned in architecture about the sense of place. Uh, the Regency Hyatt House in Houston, uh, of course all Regency Hyatt houses have atriums. Uh, this one happens to be a bar which tells you, shows you the priorities in Houston and uh, as the greatest space in downtown. Also uh, on the ledges of the bar uh, there are fashion shows uh, but it, it really is an exciting space and people come together and enjoy the sense of place there. Uh, the building is quite energy conserving. We've uh, all of a sudden it's hit us like a ton of bricks that we better relearn some of the issues we were learning in the 40s and 50s about energy uh, and we find that uh, this building uh, is a solid mass building and is quite energy efficient with its orientation of the windows neatly uh, neatly protected. The How's the what? All right, you don't want me to talk about last week, do you? Okay. All right, the uh, uh, interior environments uh, vary, vary. We do believe in a variety. People get bored with sameness uh, and uh, also Houston uh, certainly uh, doesn't have the potential of having a sidewalk cafe, but this is an indoor-outdoor cafe along the way and the room is, uh, works quite well uh, in the hotel, as do the bars uh, and the meeting areas. Uh, we're very much concerned about the public place, again, about people coming together uh, in the Jones, Art, um, Jones Hall Performing Arts Center. Uh, the event of seeing, seeing and being seen was considered in the design of the lobby, the terracing, the overlooks, uh, the excitement of seeing your friends are, are seeing really uh, interesting people, whether they are participating people or are committed people. And then inside, the, uh, the Philharmonic in New York uh, 
made a significant enough mistake in that they built the Philharmonic and the acoustics didn't work and the architects looked like idiots so uh, not that we were any smarter but we said hey we better not do that so we um, uh, we came up with uh, kind of a cop-out which is tune the house and uh, the ceiling is computerized uh, in eight foot uh, hexagonal uh, acoustical shapes and you put your computer card in it and the se each segment raises and lowers so the conductor tunes his own house according to the performance that he wants uh, also the the ceiling actually lowers and blocks off a portion of the house so you can have either 3,000 people or you can have 900 for more intimate performances uh, this gives uh, we think it breaks the cliche uh, all purpose no purpose we think it does give purpose and that uh, they do have a multi-use hall um, which is working quite well for them in Houston uh, then the second generation of that was for Akron Performing Arts Hall and uh, we reduced the weight of the ceiling the acoustical ceiling uh, by about six times by going to a catenary system where we put the acoustical baffles in a catenary segment uh, we still have a computer employed but we used a stage loft concept of uh, stage rigging and the um, counterweights that you see on the right actually raise and lower the ceiling and they're expressed in the lobby so as you come to a performance they become a kind of kinetic sculpture that actually changes uh, according to the event and it's you know it's good fun and uh, it's the kind of things that uh, we need certainly more of in architecture and the people in Akron really enjoy the place um, and they enjoy the music uh, and it uh, it's a nice little project in the community. Yeah, we, um, we also are uh, uh, very excited about the interior environment and uh, we do sometimes very corporate uh, bank image kind of thing for a small little bank in Texas uh, to a corporate office on the right to our own offices in Houston uh, which has a double T indirect structure indirect lighting system mechanical trough down the middle and uh, we think that's probably the last you'll see of this uh, high degree of illumination we're concerned about task lighting and putting the light right where the action is and cutting out all those good watts that are that are going to waste uh, our office in Houston is a Kiva concept you drive in uh, over a bridge and you go down in that entryway uh, on the left uh, someone said how do you get those 200 people up in that little building well that's the cooling tower but you go down into the entry and this is the entry which looks out over the bayou as they say in Houston uh, but you, you're not looking out at cars and it's really a very pleasant environment uh, it was a site that no one else wanted to build on so we uh, bought it uh, the uh, white wall that you see on the right uh, is a dam that represents uh, two feet above the high flood line so it was a, we were the only ones that would do anything like that uh, the Bradbury building is uh, where we are uh, here and we're very interested in the concept of recycling buildings as as I'm sure you are and the concept of recycling is is quite exciting when you think about regenerating a shell similar to what you've regenerated here to a new life form uh, and I think uh, one thing that particularly uh, excites me uh, which I've only recently come to realize that if I think about the buildings that we're designing now as being recyclable I think this would give us a new concept of how we approach our problems I'm not sure what the answer is but an awareness uh, that your buildings will be recycled uh, I think can lead us in fresh and innovative ways uh, process for a hospital in Phoenix Arizona uh, again uh, 
complex uh, zoning matrix on the right, which you've seen, but on the left, uh, that taking another step then from the genetic track of the zoning diagram to an architectural concept of, of, a, of a, a health concourse that's the organizing element of mechanical units that are up in the air uh, that feed down so as not to impede flexibility of individual departments. It's a kind of a chassis where things plug on and you can even unplug things because this happened in the construction process. They decided not to build a piece of it so they just took it out and it's fine. The thing holds together and it can grow and it can change and uh, that's what I'm particularly excited about is how things never arrive but the process of trying to get there and the the plan is a, a very direct kind of plan uh, with circulation and, and in, in this health concourse beds plug on uh, they do their own thing uh, and then uh, the various departments plug on and do their own thing and each one can grow and can fill in and it's kind of waiting to become and I think that's what's exciting about this uh, particular building uh, and lo and behold, you take the diagram and you put a skin around it, uh, and there's a building. And uh, it's certainly not unlike uh, uh, some of the things that might give one a traditional recall of uh, desert architecture, or let's say the early Spanish style, as they like to say over in, in, in Phoenix. Uh, it's a skin. We wanted to use a metal skin on this, but we found it was too expensive, so we went to the concept of a disposable wall, which was stucco, which was the cheapest thing we could possibly use. Uh, and uh, it just kind of sits there and you, you build wall and, uh, and then inside the mechanical ducts come down and uh, they curve and uh, feed into the different floors uh, and uh, they're not hurt because they're part of the orientation concourse but man they're really functioning when they get out to that, uh, to that, service, uh, that service area. And uh, the idea is that people hopefully can relate to a sense of entry. Uh, there's a structure waiting to, to capture a mechanical unit if somebody would just put it up there, uh, but it's ready to go. So the building is waiting to, uh, waiting to become. Um, there are loft spaces for people to gather. And the idea was that uh, a hospital should uh, not be a dreary place, but that I think hospitals can have good architecture uh, and you can be very tough-minded about how you solve the pro functional problems. Uh, these images to me are not unlike some of the things one experiences in Mykonos uh, in the Greek islands. Uh, we're very concerned about how buildings blend into the landscape as the Pima uh, Community College uh, blends using the soil right out of the ground. Uh, at UCLA we are uh, very excited about uh, tying the campus together. Uh, Westwood Boulevard, as you know, uh, splits the campus in half. Uh, we're closing Westwood Boulevard and trying to create a sense of place, a social and political place, which is gravitating uh, towards the student union uh, near Poly Pavilion. Uh, the first step in that is to develop an interface facility for faculty, students, and alumni where people will sit down and talk over common problems and maybe do something together. And uh, here, by closing Westwood Boulevard, trying to capture uh, uh, the sense of, of plaza space, of sculpture, as, as in the Murphy uh, Sculptural Garden, a new sense of automobile uh, entry, uh, an arrival point, uh, and a building that is not a building. Uh, in a way it's more of a system. UCLA is full of blocks of buildings and we were trying to come up with uh, one that would capture some of the indoor outdoor garden concepts of California uh, with a Galleria concept. Uh, the Bradbury building keeps influencing us every day and in the Galleria that goes through the building uh, there would be a media display of capturing the spirit of UCLA and up on the up and then there would be several rooms and conference centers and ticketing and kitchen then on the upper floor would be uh, open office landscaping but the system would be a tree system uh, that's repeated uh, and it becomes arcade 
uh, it becomes a piece of a building uh, it becomes a connecting element uh, it becomes the lighting system with indirect lighting uh, between it is the mechanical tubes that go through uh, and it begins to create a kind of tree or ordered matrix that events happen in but it's not a defined building uh, we're concerned about how people work in factories, uh, the fact that the tough industrial environment and the uh, administrative environments need to come together. Uh, we're working on a project presently in Los Angeles that's exploring the concept of the quality of working life, uh, how the industrial society can be a much more humane place, an enjoyable place uh, to work and live. Uh, here are our great clients. I, I thought I'd show you uh, four projects that we're doing in Columbus, Indiana. Uh, this first one is the Fadria Community School uh, where um, educators and kids uh, were the client. Uh, this shows the gaming process. Uh, I was talking to a, a gentleman right before the lecture about how how sometimes it's difficult here in the school to form teams to work together. Uh, I think that may be something we grow out of because uh, it was kind of interesting. When we set up a gaming situation uh, in Columbus, uh, natural teams formed. Uh, the kids came in and, and, and found groups of three or four, uh, some five. Uh, there was one person that worked alone because no one else wanted to work with him. But uh, they really formed natural groups and they began to test uh, concepts and it was it was very exciting and you know some of the things that they wanted were 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 slides and uh, they wanted bright colors and flags and uh, carpets and air conditioning because those were kind of status symbols for them they were from from very uh, lower socioeconomic group there some of the educational concepts were to move toward the cluster issue of flexibility of space in clusters. Uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to determine uh, enrollment. Uh, Ray, I'm sure you can do a better job than most educators about enrollment, but uh, they were having a tough time. And so they uh, wanted the flexibility of clusters. They also wanted the material resource center that could iris, that could expand, because eventually the whole school would become a materials resource center. And uh, also uh, Columbus, as you know, is kind of an architectural center. And they wanted to, we wanted to as well, and we talked to the kids about letting the kids design uh, their environment. And, and that could be part of an educational concept. And uh, certainly you seem to be doing that here uh, to some extent. But uh, uh, there are some lessons to be learned here. And they're very interested in exploring this idea. But the cluster concept would really give the option for overlapping of space. And it led us really toward a more open planning concept. Very much interested in the well-being and the healthy concept of self for the individual and very much interested in exploring community education and this to our knowledge is the first combination of adult and community uh, adult and elementary age kids uh, going to school together uh, in the country um, there's community educational program they're interested that the school would never sh close and we're interested in that as architects, as you should be, because once the taxpayers pays for them, why should they lock the doors at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? And so one day we think this building may recycle out and become a community center. And we overtly tried to design it with that in mind. And we, we, it hasn't yet reached the 24-hour use, but it's, it's, getting, it's getting close. It's getting late night use now. And so from this kind of zoning and the materials resources zoning of, of various levels of core space, special space, general information, then we move toward a site exploration, actually game the facility on the site. Uh, the yellow represents the loft space, educational space, with, which was free and open. The red circle is we call it uh, an interaction kiva. It's, it's a place, the kids wanted to have a place to be alone, the place to go in small groups, 
uh, just like just like adults do, just like you like to walk on the beach. Well, they didn't have a beach, so they wanted a place to be alone. We have a, a series of ramps. Uh, not only are they good fun to run up and down, but they're good for the paraplegics. Uh, the purple is the MRC, which reaches out by carts, mobile carts. Everything's on wheels. The administration is over the entry portal. There's a community concourse that runs through. Uh, there's an art room, a, a physical education room, which is multi-purpose. Music, dining, outdoor dining. The kids go in and cook uh, and learn about cooking. Uh, at times, they have... Uh, the Parks and Recreation comes in and uses the site uh, during the summer and during the off hours. And then there are the pods that plug on, which are the pre-engineered mechanical units, uh, as well as the toilets and uh, the, core, the core spaces. Uh, we were very interested in flexibility and the concept that one could uh, mock up environments that uh, if you were studying uh, Renaissance, uh, the Renaissance period, uh, the kids could uh, make a stage set. Uh, they could study science and, of course, history and uh, math uh, during that period. And so we put a theater grid, a Unistrut grid, over the entire school. Uh, this was the first Unistrut floor system in the country. Unistrut said, we just make roof systems. We said, yeah, but what about the kids uh, down below there? Uh, they need a flex flexibility as well. And uh, anyway, with a little persuasion, they uh, decided they'd give it a try. Now they're very proud of themselves and market this uh, as part of their system. Uh, but it took some persuasion. But uh, it really began to work pretty well as a, as a universal grid uh, over every space. And so the whole school is covered. Uh, part of the concourse is covered as well uh, as you see the uh, architecture begin to emerge. Uh, the exterior skin is just clipped on. It's the Robertson foam panel that you can't use anymore. And there's a new one out now. But it clips on. It's very lightweight. Uh, about 85% of this project was pre-engineered. Um, and then the environment becomes one of, uh, I think, quite dynamic. Uh, there are slides the kid, for the kids to slide from one level to the next, and we made them a little wider so the teachers might slide and loosen things up. And, but it's, it's an interesting uh, little school. Everything's on wheels, which I really love. Nothing's, nothing's tied down. We even put a flag of Texas in there, and there's one of California back over the way but the idea was some of the kids had the idea hey we like flags and so we said gee that's neat let's let's get a flag from every state in the union well you can imagine the third and fourth graders wrote off to all the governors for their flags and they got three so I think that might tell us what kind of shape we're in uh, as a country but uh, so we bought flags which is terrible but Anyway, the environment is quite exciting and it's changing and I always enjoy going back to Columbus because it's a vital place. Uh, the second project that we're doing in Columbus is a small bank uh, fairly near the school on, on more of a, of a thoroughfare, if you can have a thoroughfare in Columbus, uh, but we tried to make a street building. It's, uh, it's, it's a building with a greenhouse that clips onto it. Very small little bank uh, with lots of flags and, uh, and the greenhouse and the planar walls that form a kind of facade backdrop. And then tucked under, under this facade uh, are the teller units and the mechanical snorkels that blow out the air. And we had fun with the uh, teller unit. Uh, we said, you know, gee, there are a lot of banks uh, have been done, and there's a barrier between the teller and the customer. So how could, what could we do to break that barrier down? And uh, so we tried to come up with our, quote, invisible teller counter. And uh, I think we made a little progress here. Uh, the building on the left is it's not complete yet, and I'm sorry the people aren't in it, but uh, at least you can begin to show the see the evolution. We found a German submarine door and used it as a vault and uh, we, uh, we like snorkels and glass for the reflectivity, kind of the juxtaposition of reflectivity with opacity. Uh, here they're moving in the furniture. These are fairly fresh slides. A third project is a non-people building uh, which is uh, for Bell Telephone. 
And the first concept that we came up with was, my God, Ma Bell, you better take the lead in energy conservation. And what you really need for your solution is a supplementary energy system where you not only capture the heat from all that computer jazz inside, but you also look at solar radiation and you guys are doing it out in outer space, so why don't you do it on the building? Well, they really got excited about it and we almost pulled it off. It, it got, it got, it got, it got all the way up to the Hefe Grande there. And they said, for Christ's sakes, it'll take us a million and a half dollars just in R&D and we don't want to do it on this project. But they left the door open and so we may have a chance to work with them on another one. I, the only reason I tell the story is I think that Architects really have to have the balls to approach people on issues that you really have conviction about. And I think you, you know, we, we were making some motherhood statements about what Ma Bell ought to do. And uh, they really got excited because no one had ever tried to direct them in that way. Anyway, uh, they rejected our concept with the uh, energy conservation. So we came back with a more conservative scheme, uh, which is to build a 250-foot uh, long trellis, cover it with ivy, and put it as facades, or the street facades on the building. And it'll be flowering uh, wisteria and uh, reflected mirror glass on the building which has uh, no mullion, it's a mullionless glass there. And uh, Ma, Ma felt this was really a conservative scheme after the other one. And we're kind of excited about this because while it's not a people building, uh, we think the space between this uh, uh, 50 foot high grid of ivy and lights, it's a living billboard. We have lights up on it and I, I really think it's going to be exciting at night because when you see the wisteria in Indiana, it's just it's just tremendous. It'll smell nice too. And then people can walk in between this ivy, this billboard of ivy, uh, and we'll have banners there and it'll reflect the ivy and there'll be uh, little educational elements on the street, on this brick. It's a very tight site. Uh, and it's the kind of thing that um, I think could contribute to uh, particularly Ma Bell's image. Uh, the most radical thing they've done to date is Indi Indiana limestone. And uh, so we think they're beginning to make, make a, step, a step forward here. And we're, we're pretty, pretty excited about this. Uh, the fourth project that we're doing is a, is a small uh, tennis club and golf club. Uh, we, the tennis courts are, are out for bids now and the, the club will come along soon we hope. Uh, but a very tiny little building uh, with uh, again Unistrut. You say my god is that all you ever do but we like Unistrut and uh, it, it just clips in there and uh, there's a little grotto that you go into which will have the biggest TV screen in the world in it so that when you play tennis you can see yourself all the bad things you do and the same thing for golf and uh, then it, it'll have uh, hanging uh, translucent elements for display and it has a little uh, a little greenhouse uh, skylight on it and it's it has some order to it and it opens out uh, onto the golf course and heaven forbid we're even going to have natural ventilation in it you know we're the, all the walls are going to open the breeze will blow through and we're trying now to get a windmill that'll actually work and give us our uh, supplementary electrical energy that's tough to find right now there a lot of talk about it but uh, we hope we can uh, we can find it now could I have the other other tray I promise the next tray is not as full so I won't bore you uh, very much longer All set? No. Ah, there we go. 
Now, uh, one thing that we're very interested in, uh, not only in lightweight materials, but the concept of encapsulation of space. And uh, we, we certainly think there's a great future in the encapsulated space concept uh, in architecture. Uh, the problem that we face so far is that uh, the chances to explore it have just been too small. And uh, you really need uh, the, this project uh, at Santa Clara University is only two acres and you really need more space. And uh, the idea here was to bring in a variety of events uh, taking place simultaneous. Yes, we're interested in intermix of activities. Uh, it's a truly a 24-hour building. There'll be swimming and art exhibits and rock concerts and athletic events and exercise and jogging and...